on The Reno Show. I'm going to give you the three steps you need to nail your Reno timeline. Rowan is revealing the reasons you need to use a Phillips head or a flathead screwdriver and I'm showing you with Bristol paints what the best way is to get rid of mould in your home. Our naturopath Temi is revealing the three nutrients you cannot live without on any reno site. Leading real estate agent Mark Kemple is answering your questions of should you be providing a building and pest inspection when selling a renovated property and our money mindset coach Denise is back and she is here to tell you how to stop holding yourself back from your renovation success. It's Naomi Finlay here, your rapid renovation expert. Now you've completed the hard yards, have you? you? You've done enough research to fill a library and your budget and estimates would make your math teacher proud as punch. And you've finally found the perfect property. You've nailed down what your renovations are going to be to find the sweet spot. And that old shabby bathroom is getting updated. Those 60 tiles are due for retirement and the green accents ugh, are shutter worthy. The back veranda is also getting a makeover, right? The old granny on the rocking chair is now going to be a modern, beautiful outdoor space. And you're going to put in a gorgeous set of bifolds. Fair enough. It's going to be amazing. And to finish it all off, you already know the exact natural elements and finishes that you're going to be putting in that will be simply irresistible. Everyone will be torn, I tell you. Every Tom, Dick and Harry in your target market are going to want this property. But it's now renovated time. So how long are all of these tweaks going to take? How long are all these upgrades going to take? Which trades are you going to be calling first? What's your backup plan if the plumber isn't available next week? Is your intricately woven renovation plan going to start to completely unravel if there's a late delivery? Well, these are a common theme in renovation woe, I tell you. And the theme here is that time is money and renovation timeline here is key. You know, they do say that time is money and I completely agree. They're absolutely not wrong. And when a journalist has a deadline and they need to finish a story before the date or the day is up, otherwise they risk losing their slot in the newspaper, right? And missing out on their paycheck and it would be a heck of a lot of work to go to waste. So the same goes for renovating, especially when you're renovating to create wealth. You've already worked out the profit that you want to see. And on the other side of this renovation timeline is a wonderful payday for you. Now, just to make sure though, that you get to that end of the time, to that timeline before the strike of midnight at the end of your renovation and you turn into a pumpkin, you need to make sure you have a plan. So the more time you spend on actually renovating, the more money you're going to see disappear. That's not to say that you should like scrape, um, scrape through with a dodgy bathroom or a dodgy kitchen renovation or stick with only cosmetic stuff. But what it is saying is that you really need to keep an eye on your renovating schedule and make sure that everything and everyone sticks to it. There are three factors that you need to take into account. Now, the first one is the order of the events. The first thing you need to be considering when drawing up your timeline is exactly what order things are going to go in. In other words, what's going to come first? What do you need to bring in first before anything else can be done? Or what needs to be removed first? For example, if you have decided to gut the kitchen and replace it with the latest and greatest, there will be certain things that have to be done before other things. Before you can put in the new cabinets, you're not going to need to make sure that there's space for them. Have the old cabinets been recycled or have they been thrown out? Has the wall leading into the living room, the one standing in the way of your perfect open plan space, been knocked down yet? 
And then you can't slap on a Caesar stone bench top if you're not had the cupboards installed, nor can you cover the hole in the wall with, with those shimmery splashback tiles that you handpicked if your electrician hasn't come and wired in all of the electrical power points. And when the plumber's supposed to come in and do the piping, definitely not at the end of the whole kitchen being done. So the order is so important. Now, number two, the time it takes for the warm up. So stick with me here. I want you to take into account the time it takes to warm up before the race begins. So I want you to think about this one. A long distance runner doesn't just show up to a marathon 30 seconds before the race is about to start. He shows up an hour before. She warms up. She's conducting and conditioning her body along with her trainer. And just like a marathon runner, you're not going to jump in and show up on the day you get handed the keys with a jackhammer and start smashing out the floor. It's going to take you time to get all the essential equipment to the renovation site, delivery of the tiles, orders of the products, measurements of the cabinetry. This all needs to happen before your renovation starts and it doesn't happen instantly. Now you definitely shouldn't be leaving all of that sort of prep, all of the pre-steps, all of the warm up right until the end. This is all part of your renovation journey. Number three, the time it takes to finish the race. We're continuing this racing analogy here. On your marks, get set, go. The marathon racer completes the track. His coach is by his side on the sideline, timing his laps. How long did the first hundred take? How long did the next hundred? And so on and so on. What about the last leg of your race? So the third part of this is where the timing of each job is actually taken into consideration. You've worked out the order that the jobs need to go in, the prep you need to do before you start. Now you need to think about how long each and every task is going to take. So how long will it take to knock down the wall? How long will it take for the cabinetry to be installed? How long will it take for the piping under the sink and the dishwasher? So you can see, Work needs to be done in a series of events, right? One after the other. And work equals time. So you can save time and money and effort by having it all planned in a timeline that you and your trades are all very well aware of. Otherwise, there'll be a whole lot of confusion and chaos on site, and not to mention a whole pile more gray hair. Having a well-planned timeline and sticking to it is one of the most important things that you can do when you're renovating for wealth. But that does not mean that you should be rigid in that. It does not mean that you should not allow minor changes. After all, things happen that are way beyond your control. You can't possibly think of every single thing that could occur when you're renovating. Being flexible will help you overcome any hurdles that come your way. And it will also mean that if you are ahead of schedule, that you can move things around, push things forward so that you can actually finish earlier and save yourself money. So all in all, have a well thought out timeline in place, but remember to allow for some wiggle room. It might even leave you with a bigger profit at the end of the day. I've always wanted to know, and I get asked all the time from students and people around the country, why is there a Phillips head and why is there a flat head screwdriver? So I brought Rowan along today to try and shed some light on why when someone goes, give me a screwdriver and they bring you the wrong one, you go, oh, sorry, I need a Phillips or I need a flathead. Why have they done this to us? Why is it so confusing? Well, let's, let's start with a history lesson. Okay. Start I'm gonna, with a history I'm gonna lesson. I'm going to nestle back into okay, the chair. Okay, settle down, relax. Okay, we've got a history book, so I put my professor's hat on. The screw originated like in the 15th century, basically. It was wow. constructed from timber back then and quite large uh, and they would have carved the threads by hand because they didn't have lathe tools at that stage um, and the flathead screwdriver well not necessarily the screwdriver as a using tool but they, they had a, a flat head in the screw at the time to fix it to whatever they were fixing normally right. we're not talking about buildings we you know they were just using nails and things like that at that stage we're talking about wine casks and rum barrels, wine barrels. And things like that all the good stuff um, yeah, so they would have a flat 
a, a flat, um, what do you call that? Like a channel yeah. in the head of the timber screw and that's how they would fix it. And they'd use something like a screwdriver Yeah, well, we, there's, there's, there's no real history of the, the screwdriver at that early stage. It doesn't yeah. come in a couple of centuries later, but they're still dealing with timber, so they're still dealing with flat heads. Uh, and it wasn't until the advent of metal lathes and uh, the ability to turn a, um, a screw thread that made it cost effective to produce metal screws that we started looking for alternative me methods okay. of, uh, of fixing. Because as I'm sure you all know, with a flathead screwdriver, it's, it's very hard to keep it in the screw a lot of the time. You have to apply consistent force. And, and... if you're silly enough to be holding the screw as you're screwing oh. and as you slip. Mm. Well, that happens with all screwdrivers. It's fingers out of the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, so rookie error. Rookie error, yeah, <laughs> trap for young players. Um, but then, yeah, with the, with the automotive industry and, and uh, our friend Henry Ford, and he was looking for ways to uh, increase his productivity. And um, mm -hmm. through a series of unfortunate events for one gentleman and fortunate events for Mr. Phillips, then the Phillips head screwdriver was invented. And, and, and the benefit of the Phillips head screwdriver, the, the star-shaped design essentially, was that it meant it was self-centering on the screw. So uh, you didn't have to align the screw head with the screwdriver. You could just yep. put the screwdriver against it and give it a little turn. And, and it would self drop in and self center, yeah. and then also once you generated enough torque on the screw that it wouldn't go any further, the screw uh, driver would pop out, so it wouldn't over torque the screw, and it wouldn't result in you applying too much pressure, and then the screwdriver skewing off and spearing into the metal plate of your brand new Model T, yeah. and ruining it. So and um, causing Mr. Ford uh, damage. Causing Mr. Ford damage. And Mr. Ford figured out that uh, he was saving about two and a half hours on average per car on the assembly line by using Phillips head screws. Wow. So over the course of a year, that's a massive, massive, massive saving in time and labour and and. Um, uh, plus the the benefit of not having extra damage to your So panel. there's no massive, like you and I both agree, we've talked, we love the look and the aesthetic yes. of the flat head screw. Yes. Like it is beautiful, it's clean, yeah. it is simple, especially when they're all aligned That's right. in their finishing directions. And they're normally in a nice finish, like a brass finish or an antique sort of yep. finish, so they look amazing. They um, look amazing, spoken like a true chippy. Yeah. They look amazing. They do. But there's, so what we're saying is this is literally, I guess, a bit of a leftover um, of our evolution in screwdrivers. There's yep. no massive construction reason why we should be using a flathead over a Phillips head from your perspective. Not from my perspective, not when you're talking with industrial sort of, when you're talking about fixing massive um, members or, or, or even smaller bits of tim together. When you yep. get to fine cabinetry and stuff like that where your fixings are visible and you've got ornate hinges and things yep. like that, then yeah, it's much, much nicer to look at. I think I, we yeah, both absolutely. agree. And it just occurred to me as well that in, um, in very fine situations as well, like in a lot of electrical applications, they'll have uh, flat head screws in those because they're often in really, really small spots. And because the screw is so small, it's difficult to get uh, uh, the depth that's required for a Phillips head screw fixing in there. So they'll still have a slotted fixing as well. So Okay, so yeah. don't be stressing basically. No, not at all, not at all. There's, um, you know, uh, in a lot of your older properties, you'll still find flat head screws. Uh, and the benefit of that is it's, if they've been painted over 16 yes. times, it's much easier to, uh, to, to, dig, get, out that to paint. dig that paint out and, and <laughs> hopefully extract that screw if it hasn't um, corroded too much, um, which is very difficult to do that on a Phillips head. Um, but yeah, if you're going to use them as, as, as an architectural high point, uh, then yeah, they're, they're really pretty to look at. But from a function point, then yeah. They're easier to put in a Phillips head. They yep. self-center. They self-center. You they... can get much more torque on it, much yep. less slip. Yep. So realistically, from a pure construction and function perspective. Well, and a time perspective too. Yep. So, cause you know, uh, you, you, when you're talking about a build or a renovation and you, you're talking about uh, time to money ratio, then anywhere you can save time, you are theoretically saving money. So. Especially when it's repetitious. Yes, that's right. Yeah. If you're drilling off a deck or something like that, or you're putting wall sheets up, then you yes. just want to slap that stuff up and, and get, get on as done. fast as you can, get it done. Get it so, done. And if, you know, you're holding wall sheets against wall, there's weight, there's things like that. You're trying yeah. to you know, wrestle a door and you've got it balanced on your <laughs> on chisel your and your foot and stuff like that. You just want to, you want the, you want the screw head to be held onto the screw fixing so that you've got a, essentially you've got a free hand. So. I like it. 
Mm. There you go. So all of you who have messaged in and said, what is the difference? Why do we have two? Why is this so confusing? Now you have it. It is literally the evolution the of a evolution screwdriver. evolution of a screwdriver. I That's like it. it. Thanks, Mr. Rowan. Mr. Ford, you can thank for that one. That's right. Hey guys, Naomi Finlay here, Australia's rapid renovation expert, and I'm super pumped to bring to you a little snippet about a product that I am loving on right now. You all know my theory that once you spend your time, you can never get it back, and time is money. And everyone always talks about, Naomi, how do you do all you do with four children and everything else that you have going on? I use cool, innovative products and an amazing team. And part of my innovative product and part of my team is obviously the Bristol team. And they have this coolest product. I know that I've been saying, for a long time that one of my favorite products is the aluminium com rust converter that is there but I love this product and I want to share it with you guys today so we're at John and Heather's house I've shown you a lot for those of you who haven't seen it make sure you head over to that video series it is amazing there'll be a link below I am sure to that at John and Heather's house there's many many different surfaces and it's in a bushland setting so there's some mold there's some dirt there's mold spores I tell you there's mildew there's lichen it's everywhere this is the coolest product it's called easy mold off now the thing I love about this is it saves you money and time so it's a double bunger I tell you what you literally do this is a concentrate so this makes up to I think like 25 or so liters you can spray it on like you'd fertilize your yard with and you can leave it on the surface so this isn't a harsh chemical it's not going to eat away at your timber it's not even going to eat away at the paint that's right you can spray it onto a painted surface so whether it's painted boards painted concrete painted tiles you can use it on pavers on fences anything that has the blue black, the red, all the green mold and mildew on, you can use this. You leave it there and over time, the mold, the mildew and the lichen just literally flakes off. You come back to it when you're ready to start renovating that part of the property and you just do your normal preparation like you would any other time. So it's a game changer. It's working whilst you're sleeping. So go in, check it out at your local Bristol store. It's exclusive to Bristol. Easy mold off guys. Game changing in the renovation space. Now those of you who know me or have seen a little bit of the Renault show know that I like things pretty fast and furious and I may not always be the most patient of people and so although I know that I have had amazing exposure to our amazing Tammy guests, welcome back Tammy, <laughs> nice about that. all those sorts of things that I should be doing to make sure that I stay fit, well energised and level headed on a renovation site. I sometimes struggle to find my plants um, to put in from nature and cut them and do all the things I need to do to them. And so I've asked Tammy to join us today because I want the super gold. I want her to share with you guys the true hacks that she has shared with me and that has got me through so many things in my life, so many renovations, 114 to be precise, and so many different times in my life where I've needed energy because I've either been breastfeeding or having babies or on a renovation site or away touring or on a show or whatever it might be and there is some real gold locked away in here <laughs> and she is about to share it with you all so Tam on a reno site yeah. if you could how many can you give me three I can I can give you three nutrients and three herbs that you probably can't live without just to boost your health I mean really I'm actually not going to speak go one <laughs> okay <laughs> number one you can't live without B vitamins every single time you're making a decision every single time you have to wake up and show up for your your reno site uh, your body is pumping through B vitamins and if you don't have enough B vitamins on board you'll notice because your brain's all foggy you keep forgetting things you can't remember stuff you vague out in the afternoon yep. and it also B vitamins help you not only get energy but they get oxygen around your body okay so you can focus and concentrate and make really good decisions so uh, B vitamins are the way to go you do need B12 especially and B6 okay. so, so B12 and B6, B6. Yeah. All right, number two. Number two is magnesium. Magnesium is used in 325 different pathways in your body. Wow. 
and uh, it's really obvious when you get a bit low. You get a bit crampy. You get a bit twitchy. And sometimes, so like when your calves cramp up. When your calves stuff. cramp up, especially at night when you're trying to go to sleep. Yeah. Okay. Those ones. All right. Uh, toes cramp up in your in your steel cap boots, and uh, you can't actually sleep at night. That it, it gives you a relaxation effect. Now magnesium you can find in Epsom salts baths, but who's got the time for a bath? So you do. Or who has a bath when you're renovating? <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's the last thing to go in. That's so, right. So uh, yeah, it's uh, highly essential to have magnesium as a nutrient, and you can it is usually found with B12 and B6 in a in a multi. Yeah. Okay, number three. Number three is vitamin C. Now, who, who's been sick on site? Um, who's pump, pumped themselves a little too far, kept going and going and going, and then got right to and the end, crash. and then the crash. The then crash. you get sick. If you've got enough vitamin C on board, that crash doesn't happen. And so are we talking about like the ones we had as kids, those chewy, yummy, orange, fizzy ones? Uh, if nothing else, yes. Okay, so if worse comes to worse, chewy, orange, fizzy one. Chewy, Ideally. orange, fizzy ones, yeah. Two, 500 mil. Okay, perfect. So that's the three, first three? That's first three nutrients. If you can get something that has all three of those in, you're, you're set. You're, you're winning. winning. Yeah, totally. Okay, so that could technically just be one. Yep, it usually one comes time. in one, yep. Perfect, okay, what about the three herbs? Three herbs, okay. First thing is uh, an amazing herb called Wathania or Ashwanga. Now, I'm it, not saying that. <laughs> it's uh, been around for a millennia and it's called an adaptogen. Now, an adaptogen helps you adapt to the timeline, and to the trading <laughs> and respond and to everything that's happening around you that might be out of your control. It helps you adapt to it. So instead of being really stuck with something and then like, just getting out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Withania is amazing. Okay. So what it is, that. is it again? Withania. Withania. Yeah. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Number two. Number two, you need an immune stimulant because the same thing that happens at the end of many of my renovation peeps uh, builds is that they crash. And to avoid that crash or to avoid that last little push where all you're doing is just trying to get it finished and done Literally, and ready the to sell. Oh, oh, I've got someone coming over for a big and party. And then you get on the phone and your voice has disappeared. No. <laughs> I think she's looking at me. So um, a, an amazing herb for that is echinacea. So echinacea okay. is incredible for it. And uh, it, it's available with vitamin C quite quickly. And easily. Perfect. Now what's our third and final of these big, third final herb, last of the big six guns? Yes. Okay. So the third and final herb is an, an energy one. And it's not for now everybody. So you do need to check in with your health professional. And I happen to know Naomi's health professional, so she has checked in. <laughs> but there is a multitude of ginsengs that are available and they help you have resilience and um, be able to have the stamina that's needed if your say your build or if any of those things are going longer than you expect um, ginseng is amazing and it's an incredible stamina and resilience building herb so if we think about the words you use to describe those herbs so there was stamina mm -hmm. resilience adaptability they're all traits that we absolutely need on a reno site essential and i you can get them in a jar guys you can. <laughs> that's you winning can. you can get you them can in get a jar them in a and jar. you can have them on the way to the site with water <laughs> with, <laughs> with water because we do need the water on board we, as well we do mm. that is absolutely winning and so you know even if you address one of these things to help boost yourself and support yourself um then that's that's going to set yourself up for a really great success so thank you so much for joining us again tammy it is it's such a winner and i really can't um stress enough after doing so many renovations you can really Really lose that fun glow for it hey if you find that you're getting sick or you're just getting tired or the, the glow and the excitement of renovating is wearing off part of it might not be actually about the renovating it might be about the fact that you're not taking good care of yourself so start to attack it from this angle and you never know there might just be an amazing flourish of enjoyment for you renovating again thanks so much Tammy and we'll talk to you soon Welcome back everyone to tonight's Reno show. I have on the couch with me here, MK, Mark Kempwell from PRD Nationwide Newcastle at Macquarie. And he's back with us tonight 
to talk about a very interesting topic. It is one of the biggest things I get asked and it's about pest and building inspections, MK. So when you're renovating, so you don't have to be flipping or renovating for profit, but when you're renovating a house, you're intending on renovating it, do you really need a pest and building? What's your gut on this before you buy it? Yeah, so your mentoring, Naomi, would have been to tell people that if they're going to get into renovating, whether they're flipping or doing long-term renos, but they're doing more than one, yes, or even doing a good one, they get a builder on their team first, right? Correct. So if you've already got a builder on your team, then and you're serious about a place, yeah. your builder's coming with you to that place. Without doubt. So the builder that you have with you will be able to conduct 99%, if not 110% of the things that a building and pest inspector will look at. Yeah if you can get good access to the property, which you should be able to if you're going down that path. So, you know, they know how to look for termites. A builder knows how to look for termites. They know how to look for evidence, they know how to look for signs, jamming doors, points of moisture. All that stuff. So they're gonna be spotting out the same sort of stuff. They're also gonna be looking at it from a structural point of view. Is it, is it solid? Is it robust? Is this an easy extension? Are the floor levels right? What's underneath there? What type of timber is that? So I'd say if you've got a builder on your team already, then that's going to go a long way to covering most of it. Now, if you're in that really wild sort of needing a massive reno, the building and pest inspections you get out there aren't going to help you in that regard anyway. Because you're going to rip it apart. <laughs> yeah, you're going to rip it apart and they're full of disclaimers, right? Now, that's not saying it's not an important industry. It's a very important industry. I think if you're on the other side of the equation where you're buying something to move into or you're not super reno focused, you're thinking at some point I will appoint a builder, I will appoint a bathroom specialist, I will appoint someone to come and style my house up or get an architect. You need a red flag up front in that circumstance. Yeah, you're looking for red flags. So like, does this house have termites that can't be seen? Are there um, moisture uh, areas that are causing timber joists to be soft and the floor's going to fall Are there supports in the roof that have come away and there's a slight dip in the roof line, which rarely do people look for? No, especially if they're just busy people that are spending money on a good house that they're eventually going to add value to. So I would say for a big part of the population, person building makes massive sense. Okay. But if you're a renovator and you've got a builder on your team, they're going to be able to cover a lot of it and they'll probably go into more detail and give you more on-the-spot advice than the inspectors are going to be able to because their reports are just formatted. And do you know what? One really important point there is realistically it's that builder that's going to get le- get left carrying the bag yeah. to fix something if there's something really wrong there. Yeah. So it's in their best interest. Yeah, look, uh, there's certainly properties where you really do need a specialist, building inspector, pest inspector, moisture inspector, structural engineer, yep. whatever that might be. Um, so I think that, you know, if you need those red flags, take those people in. If you're a serial renovator or if you're doing a reno and you've got a tight knit building crew already, as long as you've interviewed them that yes, you can find these problems. Yes, you've dealt with them before, then they might be able to cover it for you. Winning. So we weren't going to talk about this, but I think it's important. So on the flip side of that, if I'm selling and I've renovated a property, do you think it's a good idea for me to provide my agent with a pest and building? On that case, 100% yes, because okay. then you're carrying, uh, you're covering the whole spectrum of buyers out there in the market and it gives confidence. So there's two steps to getting your own report before you go on the market, about three really. One of them is the inspector needs to be willing to transfer that report to a buyer's okay. name at a later date. Okay. And you, he'll give a time, he or she will give a time period, there'll be uh, maybe a $50 admin fee or something to transfer, transfer that report. It so it's, they can be legally responsible for it. The second thing is once you've agreed on that, the inspector needs to be willing to come out before you go on the market, do a thorough inspection and tell you the things that will come up in that report if they're not addressed. Yep. So if you address those actual items, then that report will be a much cleaner bill of health and the the buyers are then going to be- So it kind of gives you a second chance. It does give you a second chance rather than wait for the buyers at the height of their emotion about to sign a contract and then uh, someone says to them there's a problem. (laughs) Yeah. And a lot of the times the problems are small, but they get dramatized in a negotiation or by a lawyer reading it to them or by the inspector trying to, you know, create some value in, in, you know, what they're doing. Yes. I'm not saying all inspectors are like that, but some are prone to drama where if you had a builder standing right next to them, be like, mate, that's a $1,500 job and you're making it out to a $15,000 Or job. dude, 95% of houses have that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and putting it into context, Context I guess. is the word. Context is essential. So there you go. I love it. Building and pest inspectors are a massive part of our real estate industry and our renovation industry, and they absolutely have a space and a place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, though, I love where you're heading, Mark. If you have the right people on your team, you can actually incorporate that into your team. 
as the buying side, definitely, and as the selling side, like with friendly auctions, I think provide the pest and building inspections upfront and fully transferable. Okay, and I must admit, I'm completely with Mark. The amount of times um, that I have seen uh, clients trying to sell a property that they've renovated, and there's maybe one or two things a building inspector's picked up on, easily addressed, but when it's picked up at the height of emotion, when we're negotiating down mm. on the last things, so much of it's disproportional. So yeah. I think it's a winner. Definitely. All right. Thanks, MK. Thank See you, you next time. Are you limiting your success in your renovations? Are you really allowing yourself every opportunity you have to be successful? Well, to talk about this tonight, we have with us Denise Duffield-Thomas from denisedt.com. So it's a big question, right? It is. You know what, because I, I work a lot with entrepreneurs and people who yep. want to do something big in their lives. And what I find is that most people are competent enough, right? Most right. people know what to do, Okay. but there's something there that holds them back from doing those things. And it is fear. That's a big F word, just saying. It is. It's a big, dirty F word. <laughs> I know I say the F word a lot. But... <laughs> you haven't yet. No. Well, that's true. Good point. But fear is the biggest thing that's going to hold you back from creating success in any area of your life. And, you know, it could be that you know, you, you've even had opportunities pass you by because you were too scared. Hmm. So what I find, I see people and they're like, they're just kicking themselves over and over again. Because regret's much more bitter oh to God. taste than fear. It's horrible. And what I find that people who are successful are the people who, they still have the fear, by the way. Fear doesn't go away. No, they still have it. They just find a way to move forward. That's interesting, actually. I really like the fact that you just said that. So a lot of people say to me, I don't know how you can renovate the way you do, or even if it's on my own home or on my projects, aren't you scared? And it's like, fear, fear is still ever present in all of our lives and just in different forms and manifests in very different ways. Yeah. And so it's really about learning how to lean into that fear, isn't it? Absolutely. And I've got a few ways that I work around my All fear. Right. Share them. Let's <laughs> yes. go. So for example, at the moment I'm writing my third book. And writing a book is one of those projects. It's kind of like having a baby. It's a it's a big battle. Or project. renovating a house. Like it yeah. is, has a start and an end date. So the first thing that I did when I was writing this book is I got a coach. Okay. So I think accountability is so important to help you with the it's fear. It's huge. Because every week I've got to give two chapters to my coach. Okay. Right? So when you have somebody in your life who can help you, who can mentor you, who can show you the path, it's like it breaks it up into little bite-sized pieces and you're not as scared because you've involved Is it also um, a little bit of an insurance policy as well? Yes. Like you feel that that's nowhere as near a drop to fall from because someone's going to catch you. Like Absolutely. you're never going to get to one week before your submission date and have no chapters written. Well, Be hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the same with having a coach, having that accountability. It's having someone who has been there and who can help you. Yeah. Which you guys are so lucky because you have Naomi. She has renovated over 100 properties. Is that right? Yeah, 114 yes. now. So she kind of knows what she's talking about. So when you have someone like Naomi in your life, you don't, you're not as scared. It doesn't feel like this big thing that no one has ever done, yeah. ever. It's like... She's like, oh, well, you do it this way, you do it this way, you do it this way, and it's okay. So that's my first point is to have a mentor. Okay. But the second way to overcome the fear is to not reinvent the wheel. That is so important, Denise. Yes. So much of the time, especially when we're creator, when we're a renovator, we want to contribute and transform and see something before our eyes. And this is some of that, we've talked about money blocks before and it has to be hard. People are like, right, I'm going to go all the way back to basics and I'm going to engineer this, I'm going to plan this all myself. That limits your success big time. Um, first of all, you won't be able to do as many renovations as you'd like to Correct. because they'll probably take way more time than you thought. Yep. But also you're going to make so many mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I, I always invest in someone else's system, whatever project I'm doing, because I know that there's so much benefit in not reinventing the wheel and learning from other people's mistakes because then they've paid to make those you're mistakes. You're learning on someone you. else's dime. It will exactly. Really? And when I think of, you know, your rapid renovation formula, yep. it's like, why would you bother 
trying to find everything out from scratch when you can just follow a system. And sometimes the fear comes up, it's like, well, I can't afford to invest in that. Yep. Oh my God, that's where you're limiting your growth because it is, you will then make the mistakes on your own dime instead of someone else's. You're very direct, Denise. <laughs> no, I am because <laughs> I just know the value of a system to help you grow quicker. Is the and thing. easier. And that's, easier. I think, a bit of your romance money personality, romantic, isn't it? Yes. You're I'm very a bit lazy. romantic. Well, well <laughs> you could reframe that from lazy to clever, ease, and flow. Definitely. You know, that's a really good way to reframe, reframe that. All right. So that's the, so the first one is um, mentor. the mentor. Yeah, so mentor. helping to spell your fear. The second one is not reinventing the wheel. Yes. What's your third? Outsource. Don't do everything yourself. You mean I didn't need to demolish the concrete slab myself? <laughs> no. There would have been like a young strapping <laughs> female or male that would have done it cheaper probably and more effectively than me. Well, that's the thing. You don't always think it's cheaper at the start, but it always mm. ends up that way, that it's so much cheaper because your time is really valuable. And also how many mistakes do new renovators make by trying to do things themselves, which then costs them time and money. And so how, what's the way that you work out what to outsource then? Because some people go, but I love breaking up the concrete slab, Naomi. Don't make me outsource that. So is there like, I guess, a, a formula where you go, <laughs> um, I know you're going to say I outsource everything, aren't I you? I do. <laughs> I outsource everything in my life um, and my business. That you don't business. enjoy? Yes, and that I'm not getting paid for. So okay. I know that's tricky on a renovation because you think, well, I'm not getting paid for any of this yeah. yet. Not until the end. No, exactly. But it still applies. It's like, what is your time worth compared to someone that you can bring it in who can do it so much quicker and cheaper than you? And also sometimes new renovators, they try and do things and then they, it costs more money because they break something you know that's so true i remember one of the first houses i ever demolished and i'm like oh i can do it i can swing a sledgehammer i can totally do this i actually did more damage to the substrates and more damage to the frame that cost me more money in the end to get repaired before i could renovate yes. and so that's i guess about learning as well which comes with it a is. mentor and which comes with a great mastermind team around you Absolutely, because it's not just outsourcing the tradies, it's outsourcing the advice and the system. Because I remember when we were renovating one of our houses and I just didn't know what I didn't know. And yeah. I didn't even know the order that you should do things in. You know, like, should we do the floor first? Should we do the walls? I had no idea. And that could have cost me so much money if I Absolutely. hadn't paid for advice expert advice to tell me and that is always worth paying for so if you're trying to do everything yourself like literally yep. do things yourself but also <laughs> planning out yourself and just being alone in it not having a mentor not having a system not having a community yeah it's really going to limit both the amount of renovations you can do in a year but yep. also how much money you can make out of each one so and they not? go hand in hand definitely because because volume so the more profit you make in each and the more you can do actually just all ends up in your bottom line Absolutely. I like it. So there's three ways that if the big F word is creeping and lurking like a boogeyman <laughs> around the corner in your renovating dreams and, and that you're really wanting to grow that success and kick that fear to the curb, there's three ways you can do it. Thanks for sharing, Denise. Thanks. We'll talk about screwdrivers. Screws. Screws. Okay. Screwdrivers. Right. <clears throat> Beard. You should see it in its entrepreneur heaven. There's all these women on Max, literally, <laughs> with all this food. It's a crack up. <laughs> Whew, well done. Can't believe you knew that. We always, because I'm a ruler, I try and do too much and I lose my voice at the end, and I always, <laughs> I get so sick, I'm like, <laughs> let's go. Oh, <laughs> Next time on The Reno Show, I'll help you decide if you should sell or not sell after renovating. Organization Queen Marissa is showing you the best ways to stay organized during a bathroom renovation and Mark's back to help you figure out the reasons that your home isn't selling. Garden Guru Aaron is here to get your lawn ready for the winter months and our Reno Chef Jody is cooking up a storm while you renovate. Rowan is here also to be helping us with clearing up the differences between zinc and gal nails and screws. See you then. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel to receive weekly renovation and lifestyle inspiration. If you have a question about today's show, leave a comment below and we'll be sure to get straight back to you.
Hey guys, have you heard about the amazing new renovation app? It is the Rapid Renomate app for your phone, for iPhones and Androids, and it has just taken renovation to a new level of ease. It can track everything from your timelines to your budget, to your paint colors, your supplies, and your tradies. It has truly transformed, streamlined, and made the renovation process so much easier. If you'd love to get your free app right now, click the link below and download it immediately to your iOS or your Android device. Happy renovating.